Hi and welcome to this lesson on the introduction to waves. Okay, so what is a wave? You're probably thinking of a wave like you would see um, in the ocean. Okay, uh, waves like that. And those of course are waves as well and uh, they very much fit into what we're talking about here. But actually the water waves that we see on a pond or wherever you see water waves is a combination of two other waves. So first of all, let's start with the definition of what is a wave. Okay, our definition of what is a wave. A wave is a disturbance. Uh, how do you spell disturb? Disturbance. That's probably wrong. Okay, disturbance of um, a disturbance or an oscillation. Oscillation. That's probably wrong as well. Um, that happens in space-time in space-time okay accompanied accompanied by the transference of energy okay transference of energy okay so it is a disturbance that transfers energy that's kind of what it boils down to now we get two types of waves we get transverse waves okay transverse waves okay and a transverse wave in a transverse wave the um, energy transference okay energy is transferred perpendicular okay perpendicular to the disturbance disturbance okay so that might sound a bit weird uh, what do we mean by that okay so this is an excellent demonstration of a transverse wave you can find this at uh, PHET colorado.edu okay there's a loads of um, java simulations uh, specifically related to science so in this one what we have is a bead of strings and these strings have some sort of tension between them um, as if an attractive force so i just put the tension high okay forget about damping and what we're going to look at is the amplitude and the frequency Okay. So frequency refers to how many of these waves pass by a certain point in a certain time. Okay, so if I start it, yeah, let's see, let's start it. Okay, you can see here's an oscillation causing the beads to go up and down. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause it briefly and show you step by step what happens to that green dot. Now look as I go what happens to the green dot just or the green bead it's just going up and coming back down and going up and coming back down okay do you see that it is moving in, uh, in this case it's moving vertically but the wave is propagated or the energy is transferred uh, horizontally do you see towards the window so what we notice is that the particles inside are moving uh, perpendicular to the propagation of the wave or the transference of energy. So let's measure how long is one of these waves. Okay, so there we go, a wave going down and coming back up and going down again. And here you see this S shape, this slanted S shape is repeated again here. So this is one wavelength. And this wavelength seems to be about 45 centimeters if we're measuring in centimeters 45 centimeters so what is going to happen if we change the frequency and the amplitude let's first change the amplitude but before we do let's just measure what height it is reaching as well so we have here a little ruler that comes with the application and if we measure that height we measure it's about 15 just below 15 centimeters okay so let us change the frequency to about we are on 36 let's change it to 18 okay to 18 half of 36 is 18 and let's see what happens so remember what i said frequency is the number of waves that pass by a certain point for example through the window 
um, in a certain time. So let's see what happens when frequency is smaller. Okay, there you see, okay, what happens to the waves? Okay, it looks like they're getting longer. Okay, let's pause it again and measure the wavelength. Okay, there we go. Here's a wavelength. Previously we were at 45. Now we see we're already at 45 when we've only done half of the wave and we're at 90 when we've completed the wave. So there's definitely a direct, um, not a direct, an indirect relationship between frequency and the wavelength. We see as the frequency decreased, the wavelength increased. So that is, an, they are inversely proportionate. Okay. How about the amplitude? Did the amplitude change? Let's see how high is it. Okay. It's still just below 15 centimeters so amplitude doesn't change with when frequency changes okay so let's see what happens if i do change the amplitude let's make the amplitude about um, 35 it, the amplitude should be about let's see about seven and a half let's see what is the amplitude okay Yes, there we go. A little bit, about 7. Well, 35 is half of 70. I was on 75, so not exactly. But I think you get more or less the idea. Okay, so in this demonstration, we saw that in a transverse wave, particles in the wave move perpendicular to the transference of energy or the direction of the wave. We also saw that the wavelength, that is from the start of the wave to its crest to its trough and again to its end that wavelength is inversely related to the frequency in other words when we increase the frequency the wavelength halved when we double the frequency the wavelength halved and then we also saw that amplitude refers to the height that the wave reaches the maximum we say the maximum displacement if i were to restart you will see that that one hasn't moved at all its maximum displacement is how high it's going to get and that is determined by the amplitude of the wave okay so let's uh, let's have a look at longitudinal waves now this is a demonstration of a longitudinal wave and what you will um, or where you can find it is at www.phy.hk uh, just follow the links there to this and what I want you to notice is imagine that these lines are actually particles and um, as the particles move, let's take a look at this red one, you see it doesn't actually move away from this distance and yet it does look as if there's some motion following through and what it is is that th as this particle moves he transfers his motion into the next one and it transfers it into the next one and that goes on and on and on and as he's pushing on it it's pushing back and that's why it heads back down and as it head back down it pulls the previous one back down because there's also tension between these particles okay so again we notice that this thing if from there where it starts it is displacing so it's going up and then it comes back to where it starts and displacing to the bottom now we can actually also go and draw a displacement versus time graph and you see there it reaches its maximum point away from where it started goes back to where it starts and then it goes the maximum uh, displacement to the bottom from where it starts and this goes on and on and on so what is going to happen if we change things like the wavelength and the amplitude well let's first just understand again what is amplitude amplitude is the maximum displacement that the particle has from where it started so if it started there its maximum displacement is there or to the bottom there and that's the maximum displacement you can see the amplitude is set at its highest and if I set it half okay what is it doing now you can see it doesn't displace so so much and it doesn't look but you can still see the transference of energy but it isn't as as clear because the particles don't move as much and you can see the graph eventually is a lower graph let's put it back higher up so that we can see clearly again the transference 
So let's see what happens if we increase the wavelength. I'm just going to freeze it to show you that this is one crest of the wave where um, the energy is at its highest. This is where the energy is at its lowest and that's where the energy is at its highest again. So this is the wavelength. So look what happens when I increase the wavelength. Do you notice how they, the um, crests are going further apart? So now there's one crest and there's another crest. And what happens to this wave that we've created here? Let's see. Okay, look how this wave, if it starts here, goes down, goes up. There, it's about one, two, three and a half lines. Okay, let's see how about this one. Let me just continue it a little bit further. Okay. There we go. This time it's about how many? One, two, three, four and a half lines. So you see the wavelength increased. Now again, if we were to count how many waves pass by a certain point, that will decrease when the wavelength increases because the wavelength is longer. Okay. So it takes longer to pass by a certain point. Okay, I think that's about it that we're going to look at in these videos. Uh, in the next videos, we'll look a little bit deeper into the concept of wavelengths, frequency, the relationship, uh, amplitude, etc. Okay, see you in those videos. I hope you enjoyed this one.